I've got my YouTube channel here, The off Grid Garage, for over two years now. And at the beginning we have done a lot of battery testing, right? To find out how we charge lithium iron phosphate correctly, what happens if we charge a bit higher, how much capacity we gain, and we run all kind of tests with the CKE tester and all kind of batteries here on the channel. And some of the batteries I have used in my actual production batteries then, we built the battery 1.0, and some other of these test cells ended up in the battery shelf. And I can remember someone left a comment, use all your leftover cells from testing and build a battery from it and see how it works. And I always said, nah, 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 that's not good. It's too, too dangerous because they have different capacities, different internal risks. Of course we will. Welcome back to the off -grid Garage in sunny, hot Australia. Welcome to our Frankenstein project. Yeah, I remember this comment from one of you guys asking me to put all the batteries I have in the in the off grid garage here and build a battery out of them regardless what they are. And since this comment was posted two years ago, I always think about it and say, what would actually happen if we do that? Is this a good battery? Would it actually work or do you have dramas all over the place? And this is always something I wanted to do. And now we have the opportunity to actually build a Frankenstein battery. Out of, out of all these leftover cells, so here for example, we've got four of the EVE LF280K. They are certified cells. And they were sponsored by Volta Energy in Western Australia, which is the only company in the world who has adapted the banded ring luck. No, no, I'm serious. Trev has sent me a photo here. They're using banded ring locks in their store to build their batteries. So this is now a thing, right? So we've got four of these batteries here and we did the 200 amp discharge test with these certified batteries. They also come with these larger terminals with these double threaded terminals. Then we've got two of the EVE LF304 certified cells. They were actually uh, sent over by SFK. SFK. Sunfun Kids built the most amazing do-it-yourself 12-volt battery boxes. I've made a few videos about these battery boxes in the past and I'll link them down below again. 12-volt do-it-yourself batteries with or without batteries. You can also buy them pre-built or you can just buy single batteries from them as well. Yeah, I think there are still a 6% discount code down in the description and they're also doing worldwide shipping. So we've got two of the 304 ampere hours from EV. And then we also have the wrapped 280 ampere hour cells, certified cells as well. SFK has sent them over as well for testing purposes. And then we've got the round bobbly hythium cells here, the faked hythium, or maybe they are not faked. 280 ampere hour. We've got four of them for a 12 volt battery. And we've got another double pair of the EVE LF304. These were the ones I took out of the SFK battery box. Because to build a 48 volt battery, we need 16 cells. And yeah, we've got them all here now. 304, 280, 280, 304, 280. September 21, December 22. September 22, September 22, and March 23. So <laughs> I don't think it can be more Frankenstein than this, right? Yeah, we've got these cells here with the welded double threaded terminals. These ones have the normal welded stud. They've got a bit different welded studs. They've got the same as these ones. And then we have these ones here, which are actually which are actually threaded holes. So we have to use our our studs here, our six millimeter stud. And also these terminals are far closer to the middle than these ones here. Now you can see that. And, and because all these cells are so different from the terminals, we have to use um, a whole variety of bus bars, I think, to connect them. So we've got here aluminium bus bars, these are the big double drilled copper bus bars. We've got here an aluminium bus bar left over from the Seblos box. Heaps of the standard tint copper bus bars. And also a braided bus bar, like a flexible bus bar I bought. But they actually never fit because they were just too short. 
if the cells don't have a belly that just fit but yeah i don't like them and i also have a very special bms i want to test this battery on i've got this sitting in the box here for a while now 16s bms it's not a Zeblos bms this comes actually with a very good feature and i hope i hope it works and also because we have so many different battery cells here, we want to build this Frankenstein battery out of. I also want to use the, um, I also want to use the, come out, come out here, the knee active balancer with four amps. And I hope it can keep the battery under control. But this one here is the very first one. This is the generation one of the active balancer, which um, if I remember correctly, it didn't turn off. It has like a 0.3 voltage difference hard coded into the software. But it will be good for our battery here because I can use Bluetooth to turn it on and off. And I also still have the generation two and generation four of the knee active balancer here. So just in case we are running into trouble with this one here, we can swap it out to a generation four knee, which works perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, I think this is all we need for the moment to build our Frankenstein battery. And I want this one here to be a bit more of a community battery again. So as long as it sits here on the workbench, we can do all modifications, all kind of testing. Once we have tested this BMS here, I also want to test another BMS, which I have in one of the boxes up there. And I bought three of these BMSs right away. And you won't believe what kind of BMS that is. No, no, it is not the Batrium or Rec BMS or Orion or any kind of that. It is a, it is a consumer grade BMS, but I think this is the one which will end up in our battery shelf because I want to replace these uh, three BMSs here. I've tested them now for over a year and it works perfectly fine with them. But I really want something with a bit more of communication then to our, to our Victron system. And this is probably a BMS system you would not expect me to test or to even consider putting into the battery shelf. So, but this will come in a later stage of the Frankenstein battery. We want to start with this BMS here and see how good this one is compared to the Zeplos QSO and Jacoper BMS, the Pace BMS. Yeah, guys, um, this is um, how I want to start. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about these different battery cells we want to put in series. Yeah, this will be a series battery of 16 cells with a mix of certified, non-certified, 280, 304 ampere hours, older models from 21, newer models from 23. So really, really parts from everywhere. And the same with the bus bars. We need to make connections from, from these double threaded terminals here to, um, to basically these welded studs. And we have these amazing crimped bus bars here. Medi from the Digital Mermaid has sent over from Canada a while back. So maybe we can use a combination of these ones to, to um, build our Frankenstein. Yeah, and um, once the battery is built, I want to put this actually into the... Um, uh, into the Zeplos 48 volt uh, do-it-yourself kit. And we want to connect it to the Zeplos BMS then be because this will be BMS number two. So we may end up with five Zeplos BMSs we can actually test here in a parallel configuration and do a bit of a deep dive again into how the BMSs work together with other batteries in parallel and also with the Victron system then. Okay, so this was just the introduction to our new project here, the Frankenstein battery. Guys, let me know what you think about this project. What do you expect from this battery? Will it work? Will it have issues? In which order should I put these batteries in? We've got 10 280 ampere hour and 6 304 ampere hour batteries. What is the challenge here? What is the expectation? What is your concern building such a battery? I'm very keen to read all your comments about it. And I'm even more keen to start building this battery in the next couple of days. We can also use some of these custom-made bended bus bars here to overcome any height difference from one terminal to another. Or we can use some of Maddie's flexible bus bars for that. And then we want to bring the beast to life. Of course, I want to do a full discharge test here and see how much capacity we actually can get out of it and how the battery looks like at the discharged level. 
and how much work the BMS and the balancers actually have to control this battery when we charge it. Yeah, if you are new to the channel here, I do uh, sometimes a bit of testing here in the off-grid garage with um, batteries and electronics, BMS, balancers. And um, this is just another project where we can learn a lot, where we will experiment on. And I think calling it the Frankenstein project is absolutely perfect. If it all works out and we can bring this beast to life, you have to call me Victor Frankenstein. <laughs> we should probably also consider that some of these batteries here, especially the certified ones, are very flat. They don't have a belly. And others like the Hythium here, they are so round. Jeez. How do we put them into the Mason battery box? All the flat ones on one side, all the belly ones on the other side? Or should we mix them up? <laughs> I'm very keen to read all your comments about this crazy project here, which I wanted to do since I read this comment over two years ago. And now we have finally the capacity and the cells here to get this project started. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Thanks for all your very generous donations recently. So I can calibrate a spat from time to time and oil my voice for more videos. Until the next video, guys, when your ideas are already going into this project, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.